A very useful operation in Power Query is grouping your data. But the group by operation, unfortunately, it hard codes both the column names and the data types in your query tab. That means that if any changes happen to your query anywhere earlier, then it is not reflected in your table group by and the expand operation. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make these table group operations dynamic, so it will not hard code these values. Let's find out. So the group by operation in Power Query is meant to group your data. So it summarizes it and make sure you see unique value. For instance, if I would perform a group by operation on the category column here and on the product, I can go to home, group by, and then maybe add an extra row here with details. Say okay. Now here's what happens. Table group needs a table to group. Then it provides, uh, it needs the columns to group by and it needs an aggregation to perform. Now look over here. All of the values that we have right here and right there, actually it contains the column names and the data types of each of the columns. And this is useful because if you don't have that, then expending this table means the data types are lost. For instance, if I would remove this, that's perfectly valid because it's optional to provide a table type with specific column names or types. However, the downside is if I now expand this, I don't have any data types anymore. But that's not the only problem. Let's continue this example. If I group this, and again, I get all the rows here, I say details, here we go. I can expand the values here, and I want to expand all of these. Now, let's say that in the source tab, I would have removed something like the product column here. Uh, or, or let's take location ID because we're grouping on this. So we're removing location ID. Now, if I go to the expand column part, it's still going to expand something here, but it shows null values. And worst of all, if we go to the group by tab, even though we did some deleting of the location ID, it's actually still here. So that's not great. But another problem is, if I would not have removed this step, and I instead want to change the location ID to a whole number, then the group by operation still mentions that the location ID is text, whereas I just tried to turn it into a whole number. What that means is when I go to expand, even though there is a number value here, it now says a wrong data type. So what can we do if we don't like what, we're, what we've been seeing here? Let me show you. So we just did a group by operation on just the product category. And let me, let me start out with the combined one. The first method I'm going to show you only works if all of the operations you perform are on the underlying table object. So what does that mean? If I'm going to go here and I'm going to group something here, it says category and product. We're going to have all rows and we're going to have details as the column name. Press OK. Perfect. Each of these table objects contains all of the rows that belong to the combination of product Americano and category beans. That's for the first line. Now, if you want to perform an operation on the underlying table object, you're pretty good to go in the next in the following way. So let's say I'm going to remove all of these data types. That's perfectly valid. Now, I already showed you, you're missing the data types if you would expand this into a column. Now, let's say that I want to add an index column. Normally, you would do that by pressing add column, index column, and let's say from one. That uses the table index column function here. I'm going to copy this code. Now, instead of applying that to the level of what we're seeing on the screen, we could also apply that on each of the table objects. So the underscore, I'm going to replace it with this step. And the underscore actually represents each of the underlying grouped tables. So instead of the group row step, I could say, I want to see this. Now, if I then preview what we have in our table object, we actually have an index column as shown over here. Perfect. Now, what's... What's so great here is that all of the information that we need resides in this table object. So we don't need any information 
anymore that's here because we already have those two columns in the table object. And if that is the situation you're in, life is good. Life is good. Here's why. Because if this is the table objects that we have, I can zoom into that by saying right click, drill down. You could manually do that too, but you simply reference the, the table name and the table column. Now, if you want to combine all of these, you can write table combine. And what that does it is uh, it automatically ex ex uh, combines and expands all of the columns here. And if I, uh, so, so over here, we just have all of the columns that we had earlier. Now let's see what happens. If I remove the date column, right click, remove, insert, then that date column is not hard coded in any way to this group by step. If I go to details, the column types are still working, but the date column is gone. Now, the second problem we had was we actually had a location ID with type text. And if I would change the data type in the start here, our earlier problem was that it was not taken to the end of the query. But if we click here and say a whole number, you guessed it, right? We go to the end and actually my location ID is still whole number here. Now, why, how is that different? That is different because in our previous step, we had a look at First, adding an index column, so that index information we have. But instead of providing all of the details, hard coding the names and the types, I just said it's a table type. And that's fine. I could even remove that part. But the most important piece of the puzzle was that I used the table combined function to grab whatever is visible there, what's available, including the data types, and expand it. Now, this is not the best solution in every situation. It works for this one. So this is the easiest if you just want to expand what is in your group columns here. But let's see another scenario. So I'm showing another query here now. Let me make this a little bit bigger. And we're going to do something similar. So in this case, I want to have a group by on the category by. I'm going to have account rows. But also I go to advanced and add an aggregation for the all rows which will be again our details column. I press OK. Now what is different this time? So last time all of the information that we needed was inside here. So inside here we added an index column and the category was already here. Now that category is still available in our table object. So that's still fine. But the count that we just computed here, that information is not available here in the table. And because of this, we are actually not able to use table combine. Because here's what happens. If I would go here and use table combine, that count information is not here. The count information is gone, so we're missing what, what we needed for our query. So what can we do instead? Now we're going to have to do something different. So let's see. The first aggregation was the count. That one is going to stay. Our problem was in the argument that provides all the information from the table. Now, the first step I'm going to recommend is always remove these if you want something dynamic. So this is the table specification, the specification of the table type. Now, we're still going to have a problem if I expand this. So let's say I would expand the date column, the product, the category, and the quantity. We don't need the log. Uh, actually, we don't need the category. We need all the others. See, so we're actually missing the data types here. But what is the solution if we want to actually see this? Now, to make this just slightly more interesting, let's add that index column again. Table add index column. Or you know what? We're going to start with how it is. So right now, we need a way to get our table type information and we can do that dynamically. We can do that dynamically because all of this information is actually available in the source step. So I could say, I want to know the information of the table type of the source step. So I could, for example, say value type source, and that will give us the type table. But of course, if you're new to this, you wouldn't really know what's in here. I'm going to show you 
explicitly what's in here by using the type table schema function, func uh, function. And by doing this, you can see that the table type contains all the information of these columns. And it also contains info about whether it's a text type, what kind of column it is, and actually a lot of stuff here. Now, here's the thing. You wouldn't know about this unless you're very comfortable with the M language. So I'm just showing you this as is. But if you want to learn more about that, I recommend getting the definitive guide to Power Query M because we teach everything about the M language in there or if you want some more than just the user interface. But let's continue the example. So now you know what a value type is. So the value type function allows you to dynamically retrieve the information you need from a table type. So I'm going to copy this, delete the step, and instead of saying type table here, I'm going to paste what we just had, the value type. The value type will now retrieve all of the information it needs from the source step. Here we go. So source references source right here. And the value type part is going to take the type from that specific value. Now, if I press OK, and I'm going to expand some columns here, everything except the category, you actually have the data types available. Perfect. Now, it needs to be slightly more complex, so you know what to, how to handle that as well. Now let's say we also have to add an index column, table at index column. So our index column will be called index, starts at one and has increments of one. Right now, the index column is in each of the table objects. Perfect. However, if I want to expand, actually there is no information here about that index column available. And the reason is, when you expand, it only shows the information available in the, the table type that we specify. In the table type, the value type source, it doesn't have any information here about an index column. But what you could do is we can actually perform that same operation on the source table. But, in, but when you have a very big table, you don't really want to do this on a lot of columns. So what we can do is instead is say table at index column to the source step, I'm going to call it index one, one. That's the first step. And now we can actually expand everything. Yes. But here's one more thing I would recommend. If you're going to do this, then make sure the source table is empty. So you can write table first n, and just give me the first zero rows. Because it doesn't really need the values, it just needs the table types. And by doing this, we go to expand rows, and the only thing I'm going to remove still is the category. We already had that. And actually, you now have all of the columns you needed expanded. Perfect. And the same thing goes here. If I change my location ID to a whole number, perfect. I can go to expand tables, and the location ID is still here. However, if I go now to the first step and I would delete the date column, guess what happens? So my group by operation does not hard code the date column. However, my expand operation does actually hard code the date column because it tells right here that it wants to expand it. So the last piece of the puzzle that I want to show you is that we can also dynamically expand our operation here. So how does that work? It wor Actually, when you look at the table expand table column function, you can see four different parameters here. So there is group rows, details, and then another couple. Now, if you don't know what, what is uh, a required argument, you could go to Power Query How, and you can go to uh, Table, and then Expand Table Column. Now, the table expand table column takes a table as input, needs the column as text, and the new column names, uh, the column uh, names as text as well. Finally, there is an optional new column names argument that allows you to rename everything that you, that you expand. And this is information that's very important. Because, like for example, if, if we have that date column and you want to call it my date, it's going to show up. 
But as we just saw, we don't need the date column. So our first step, step to make this dynamic is to remove the fourth optional argument. We're not going to need it. Here we go. Now, the last question for us is, how can I dynamically determine what the columns are that I need to expand? And the answer is, we need to pick it up from our table. Now, here's how we can do that. So we were in this group row step. If I want to find all of the column names that are in this table, I could add a separate step here and say table column names. And it will get me all of the column names from this group row step. I'm going to copy this for now. Now, if I want to know what the table names are within this table object, I need to drill in into the table object itself. And I can do that by writing group rows. I need something from the details column. And I'm just going to look into the table object of the first item we have. This will zoom into this specific table object right here. Now, if I want to have the column names from that, I could write table column names. And there I have the next list. I'm also going to copy this. So basically, I now have a list of column names for this table and also a list of column names from the table object within here. Now, I'm going to delete this. Now, in the expand column names, I need to make sure that I expand everything except the column names that we already had. So here's what I can do. Here we go. So the table object as table object columns is the column names from the previous step in the first table object. Let me just make a let statement here. I'm going to make a comma for our next variable. Then I have table columns. And the formula for that was very similar to this, but it was only for the group rows. Now, if I want to find the difference between those column names to find the unique ones to expand, I could say calls uh, to expand is list remove items. And I'm going to reference all of the items that are in my table object. And what we're going to expand is all of the table columns that already existed. Here we go. Now, what's left now is if I return this columns to expand, press OK, I dynamically have available what columns to expand. Now, what does that mean when I write this? That means that if I delete a lot of columns, like I could, for example, delete the quantity as well, then I get to expand details and the quantity column is actually gone. But if I would include both the date and the quantity again, my expand column operation actually still contains everything. And that's the kind of cool thing you can do if you know a little bit about the M language. So you now learn two strategies. You can either combine your table with, uh, with table combine, or you can create your own table type dynamically and also expand things dynamically using the logic that I just showed. Well, I hope that uh, brought something valuable to you. If you like this, subscribe to the channel for more. And then I hope to see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.